we met with a community college who said, well, we can train them. What do you want to train them on? Industrial sewing, <laughs> please. <laughs> so the trade school said, well, that's great, except that you have to prove this is really unique. Because this is going to be an investment on our part. We have to buy equipment. And most importantly, we have to show that our degree programs are successful. So if our graduates graduate and there's no jobs, it's a huge failure. Mm -hmm. So you got to go out and pick up the phone and, and you know see get some people that you know express the same thing. Well, it turned out it was a much greater issue than I had even imagined. So I started calling anybody I knew in the industry: Minnesota, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin. And I found that everybody had the same thing. And not only did they have the same thing, but they were also all panicked because they had this whole generation of sewers that were retiring. So not only were all of our businesses growing, so it's coming back, but we're on the cusp of losing all that talent. And we were, none of us were doing anything about it. So we were able to prove that, yes, we have a need. And yes, if you bring these graduates, yes, we will hire them. So we went to the United Way. They helped fund the organization. Um, and a year ago, this January, we kicked off the first certificate program. And we have graduates that got jobs. They're selling. They're working. And um, I think what I'm going to do now is just play this video that will give you a little bit of idea about this organization. It's called the Makers Coalition. And this is what's for me. 
for maybe a lot of these you younger people in here, this won't be surprising to you, but for us old folks, it kind of was. I thought, this is great. We'll build this. How are they going to come? You know, are they going to want to learn how to sell? Like, really? Are they going to want to come and work in a factory? Like, I hope somebody wants to do this. And it was amazing, and it is amazing. Younger people are showing up, and they're learning, and coming into our factories at a much higher skill level than we were getting before. And here's the thing that's really wonderful. They love to make. They really love to make. And if you talk to these people, they will say, at the end of the day, I can look at that pile of the bags, and I made those. I made those. I know how to make that. And if you think about it, the newer generations, what, what have they been used to making? I mean, really, their hands, right? So there's a new appreciation for actually making things, right? Now, so picture this new wave of people that have learned how to industrial sell. Picture the exit of sort of this retiring generation. What happens? Well, there's these, it's a whole career now. You're not just sitting at your sewing machine for 30 years. Now we need line leaders, we need master sewers, we need co you know, we need we need team leaders, we need supervisors. So it becomes a whole career ladder. It's just an entry point. I mean, I remember when I started my career, I mean, I would do anything in the fashion industry, like sweet floor, or whatever, do anything you want me to do. But this is a really specific entry point. And we are going to be doing the same thing here in Detroit. Which we are going to start our strap leather making um, production in April of this year. And it's going to be built out exactly where we build our watches. And then a year from now, we'll build out our handbag and leather goods factory. So we'll have a full scale leather manufacturing facility at a time where they're closing. Or the ones that are are in existence, they're just totally booked. They can't handle the business and they don't want to do conference. So if you you know come to the channel in six months from you're gonna see a really amazing thing out there. We've already started with our uh, leather sample studio. So we have eight people there and we are now at least developing all of our leather products right here. So instead of all these contract manufacturers, I mean, we are designing we're patterning them, we're, we're sewing them up, we're prototyping, and we're about to launch our, our new leather goods line. Um, we'll go in there, who is it? It's a very young generation led by two veterans, probably my age, teaching. Teaching. And I'll tell you, it's really fulfilling. It's really, really fulfilling. And so I think that if we go back to the original message, what is creativity? An expression of something that's not yet for us. Right? So the makers culture, we had we didn't have a way to train. We didn't have it. So we created it. And there it goes from there. So, you know, I when I moved to Detroit, I heard about Detroit uh, Creative Quarter. God, this is great because this is there's gonna be so many ways to express creativity. And we are making a lot of things here, right? And Shinola, you know. What a great marquee for exactly that expression. So I have been really super, super lucky and uh, blessed in my career to go from a very classic train, fine arts degree, to go all the way through the business side of things where I'm running a company and looking at P&Ls and you know, dealing with the finances and all that good stuff, which, is, which also requires some creativity. Uh, a lot of it, I learned. Um, and now I'll circle back around to actually being right there. With the so I would just uh, say that you know um, all of you must be here this morning in some way or form because creativity is close to you in some way or form. And I would say that remember that expression, remember that thought, you know. And I think it can apply in just so many ways. It can, it can apply socially, social responsibility. That can be an expression. Of um, it can be in your business, it can be in your personal relationships. You know? What's not before us in my relationship with you that I can express to you? It's really a different way to look at creativity, right? Today we just have to talk about the making format of expressing creativity. So, 
That's it. That's all I really have to say. Questions? Thoughts? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Questions for us? I bet there's one. Yes. Have you, uh, or how do you, or have you thought about how to create a space for your workers so that they can also be on?
if you look around you and look at all the things that take cutting and sewing, it's all over the place. It is all over. So all of a sudden, you know, I said, oh, God, I can do this awning guy. And this guy sews mile-long canvas ducts to put in HVAC systems. I mean, like, he needs sewers, you know? So it's, it is. It's a very, very, and, and what replaces sewing? Blue, yeah. And, and even further, you know, you, you'll hear people, the, the critics, and the, I invite critics, I mean, critics come to help you, you know, ask hard questions of, of, you know, are you, is your, is what you're doing realistic? Is it smart? Does it make sense? Um, they'll ask, well, what about all the automation of sewing? There's more automation of sewing, no question, <coughs> but not solely. It still takes a person, especially with leather, it absolutely takes a person. So, I'd be happy to you know get together after this and talk, but I would just say don't you know be creative and maybe think of maybe a different format for that than you're thinking of now. Maybe the format you've been thinking it should take is what it's going to end up taking. I mean, when we first started Maker's Coalition, I thought at first I was like, well, J.W. Hume will do our own school. That was a dumb idea. I mean, it just was. You know, I mean, it just we don't, didn't have the time to teach. We're not teachers. We're not in the academic institute. You know, so um, collaborating with industry was a much better way of doing it. And as a result, there's this, you know, 50 member trades sort of organization that all know each other and are doing business with each other and supporting each other all of a sudden. You've got this connecting thing beyond the original intent. You know? Yes? I'm curious, number one is the Makers Coalition. That is a organization of businesses or is it also amenable to individuals? It's both. Oh, so we have individual members and we have the worker members. We have small business members. Okay. Um, and we have a not we have a foundation side and we have the trade side. Okay. And you can be if you're part of the trade side, you're part of the whole thing that we have and, and some people People are not even in the industry, they just want to be a part of what's happening and, and support it in some, some way. You know, when people ask that, why, why Detroit? We say all the time, because there is a baseline respect and appreciation and understanding of, of producing stuff, of making stuff. And and it's it's this is this isn't it, you know, we never did move here to be to be a charity. That's not what we, we moved because there is a industrial base here. Has a great respect for making things. That's important. You've got to have it. It's 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 like you say. It's in the foundation. It's in the bedrock. It's in the DNA here. It's just you talk to anybody and say that's from here. They have some link to making something. That's incredibly valuable when you're starting a factory. Yeah. One of the best stories is um, a gentleman named Darren. He used to be a manager of a bike shop right around the corner here. He calls and says, "Hey, I." You know, I make bags, oh, and I and I said, all right, what do you got? Show me what you got. Can you send me your tech drawings? Oh, well, I don't really have them. Oh, do you have any, you know, anything in cat or uh, I don't really have them. Okay, <laughs> well, you're welcome to come in and chat with me. So he came in and he showed me some stuff that he had done. I thought, well, listen, you know, I don't really know if, I, if this, if, like you're an imposter to showing me pictures of stuff or you can really make this stuff. So I'm going to let you come in and I'm going to start you at a starting wage and, and show me you really can do this. And by God, he came in. We have been stuck in bike bags and not being able to do bike bags. And he's two weeks into it and he's making bike bags. You know, and now he's learning from the 30 year veteran from the East Coast who's been in the garment industry forever. He's learning how to refine these streets. He's loving it. He is like he's he's the first one there in the morning and the last one to leave at night. You know. So um, this whole making thing it matters. It really really matters. And I think our culture is like we're getting that again. We're like we're missing that. We miss that. We kind of miss knowing how things were made or we miss the stuff Grandma made, the pies, whatever. We miss that stuff. Thank goodness, right? Yeah.